Hi guys, happy Sunday with Satan. <laughs> Alright, so we are going to jump right back into the sabbatic craft. So, more into the herb lord, everything, you know, that went into the ointment, the flying ointment, or the balm, or the devil's salve, or whatever you want to call it. And if you go to mysticamber.com, enter R-Y-A-N at the bottom of the screen like that, and an E, all cap locks, get 10% off storewide. So, alright, where did I go? I don't remember where I went, guys. I have no clue where I went at all. Oh, okay, the plants and everything that the witches actually used in their, uh, you know, the different whatever for the, uh, flying ointment. Alright, I lost my spot again. Alright, there we go. <laughs> Alright, now the plants used, the witches used, included belladonna, which is deadly nightshade, wild lettuce, smallage, wolf's bane, and that's asinite, Sink foil, sink foil, whatever you want to call it, five fingered grass, uh, handbane, hemlock, opium, ooh, sweet flag, wild parsley, and mandrake root. So these were allegedly mixed with uh, baby's fat, bat's blood, and soot. Yuck. All right, now Albanian witches made a flying ointment from boiled toads and mare's milk. It's wild. That seriously is. Bleh. So these are both um, totemic, totemic, totemic animals sacred to the witch goddess, and toad skin contains a powerful hallucinogenic. So we all know that about the toad. Uh, the main ingredients in the recipes are representative of a wide selection of highly poisonous plants, um, renowned for their magical or for their narcotic properties. So they also include plants that are associated either in folklore with psychic and occult powers. So asinite, for instance, is sacred to... Is that Hecate? Yeah, Hecate. And is said to have come from the poisonous plant um, Salvia of Cerberus. Hmm. The Cerberus, the, uh, the hound of hell. So um, the three-headed hound that guards the gates of Hades. Now on a physical level, it depresses the cardiovascular system, causing irregular heartbeats. Now, yeah, yeah, at, um, atropine, the principal toxin in Belladonna, was named after one of the Greek fates, whose task was to cut the silver cord at death and release the soul from the body. Alright, yeah, so yeah, none of these are, should be used today whatsoever. Um, don't use them. Where do I go? Oh, it can cause, um, hyperactivity, uh, delirium, and unconsciousness, and in small doses, produces hallucination. So there's all the reason not to do this. So in larger doses, it causes paralysis, coma, and death. Again, don't do this. Alright, now five-finger grass was renowned among medieval herbalists for inducing dreams and increasing the powers of communication. So parsley was sacred to Persephone. Really? The goddess of the underworld and love of Hades, Pluto, the god of death. Hmm. Wild parsley, really? I think we have that. Everybody has that, I think, here in the United States, growing somewhere. Now, henbane was another plant of death, and in incense made from it was used by the Romans to evoke ghosts and evil spirits. Now, mandrake increases psychic perception by opening the third eye, and hemlock, um, huh, another underworld plant, used or was sacred to Saturn. Yeah, so those are some poisonous plants, guys. Don't get, you know, don't mess with them. Don't mess with them. Just leave them be. So now the medieval grimoire, the Key of Solomon, recommends that the sacrificial knife, has, uh, known as the athame, should be anointed with hemlock juice during its consecration for magical work. Lettuce is also a natural uh, soporific. Wow. Didn't know that about lettuce. Now, finally, in what did I write here? Terms of sympathetic magic, magical belief. Um, soot disguises the naked body at night, and bats are able to navigate in the dark. All right, so we have that whole, you know, the soot covering yourself with black soot. No, we don't have to do that anymore. I'm not going to. I've never done that. So, <laughs> Ugh. several methods that were recommended to apply the devil's salve or the unjan sabathi to the body. The 16th century lawyer and writer on witchcraft, Sir, um, 
Hmm, Regional Scott said the witches rub the ointment into the pores of the skin <coughs> until it looked um, red and hot. So the French writer, Gilles de Givry, claimed that he, uh, the witches used a small wooden wand to smear the palms of their hands and also placed it between their legs. Now, another method was to anoint the shaft of the besom and then ride it uh, between the legs like a hobby horse. And that, you know, is going to actually, you know, you're going to take up that, you know, it's going to go straight through the blood-brain barrier when you do that. And you are going to get those properties, those narcotic properties from those different kinds of plants. Just like, if, you know, you, if you're sore, if your feet are sore, if your legs hurt, take ginger, ginger oil, real ginger oil. We'll rub it on the bottoms of your feet. It takes 20 minutes to get into your bloodstream. There you go. Perfectly natural um, alternative to any kind of like pain pill. Now the purpose of this was to transfer uh, the ointment onto the body by rubbing the handle against the perineum, the area of sensitive sc skin between the genitals and the, uh, the anus, so, which is the site of the most important psychic centers in the body. So it was also a place where the ointment could permeate through the skin and enter the bloodstream of the witch. So yeah, that would be a really good, a really good area for it to enter the bloodstream. But it's still scary and don't do it. Now in modern times, the traditional witch master, Robert Cochran, advocated that the witch abstain from food, salt, and sex before using the flying ointment. Then lots of grease had to be applied everywhere and lots of, um, of violent exercise. So this created, he claimed, a like a hypernormal mental state due to the toxins being trapped in the body due to the application of the ointment. Go at it a safer way. A safer way. We have more safer ways than this. So, the lack of salt, salt caused, caused higher blood pressure or sugar levels in the brain. It also cut down on the amount of water in the bloodstream and stopped a small amount of oxygen or oxygenization. So with physical exertion, the end result would be cause what Wait. would be to cause what outsiders would interpret as a hallucin or hallucinations, but a magical um, practitioner would recognize as visionary experiences. So yeah, we would totally recognize those as visual, visual, vision, visionary experiences. Um, I've used a few mugwort, I think I've done that. I've never had any really good experience with any kind of herbs, literally none, none of them have really worked for that kind of, you know, purpose for me. Now, Cecil Williamson, founder of the Witchcraft Museum on the Island of Man and Boss Castle, said that the reason why old-time witches smeared themselves with goose fat was because it was symbolic of flight. Mother Goose, a very important figure in the craft, so, in old traditional craft. Now, he added that the, uh, the ghost represented the spirit flight paths across the land. If you guys ever notice that the geese, they do fly in a pattern. They are literally flying over, um, like, ghost roads. So, um, this was because witches had, um, long noted that the migrating geese follow particular routes. The goose is also the sacred bird of the winter goddess, Fraholda, a central European deity, who was, um, or who, as we have seen, was often associated with the ancient practice of witchcraft. Now, in nursery rhymes, it gets really interesting because if you guys look up all these nursery rhymes, like Mother Goose, uh, really, Mother Goose, um, she is not as uh, nice as we thought. Now, now, in the nursery rhymes, she survived in the form of Old Mother Goose, who flies through the midwinter sky, scattering snowflakes from her wings. Fraholda is also the female leader of the Wild Hunt, and at Yule, which is December 25th, uh, brings gifts to children who have behaved themselves throughout the year. Those who have been naughty, however, she kidnaps and takes back to her lair for punishment. So we, um, there's a mix of what, Krampus? And probably Gryla from the Salvic paganism traditions, I think, maybe Salvic. Now, in the early 1960s, a German university professor, Dr. Um, Erich Will Puckert, carried out an experiment with a flying ointment made up of a recipe in um, Johannes Baptista Portal's book, uh, Magia Naturalis, Natural Magic written in 1568. 
And then this is the really, really, really weird experience that they had, and it was interesting. It's a really interesting experience that they had. Now, the salve was made from um, thorn apple, wild parsley, wild celery, henbane, and belladonna. Instead of the recommended baby fat, Dr. Packard used ordinary lard, and that's literally what it was, the ordinary lard, not baby fat. So the doctor tested the um, unguent on himself and a friend who was a lawyer. So the two men applied it to their armpits and foreheads, and within a short time, he had fallen into a deep sleep. This lasted for nearly 24 hours. Wow. No, no thank you. And during this period, they experienced vivid dreams of flying through the air, um, landing on a remote mountaintop, dancing wildly with naked women, and orgiastic rites presided over a huge horned figure. So what they did, I mean, they obviously had an image of the witch's Sabbath in mind before they did this. They had the background knowledge of it all. They did it, and they actually ex they achieved what they wanted. So they got what they wanted, which is really interesting. Now, Dr. Um, um, Beckert, Pukert, whatever, believed that the knowledge of the, um, God, Ungentum Sabathi had come to Europe in the Middle Ages with the Romani people. So he further claimed that, um, oh, <coughs> its use was, um, disseminated by secret groups of women in southern France who represented a survival of an ancient uh, matriarchal culture, which I like. All right, now this would seem to link with the theory that Middle Eastern or North African beliefs and practices um, infiltrated the medieval witch cult. So the legend of the Wild Hunt is another very significant aspect, obviously, of the Sabbatic craft tradition, and as with the flight to the witch's Sabbath. So it represents a magical link between the mortal world and the spirit realm that can be used by the witch. So yeah, well, the river sticks again. We have that boundary between here and the other side, or the other world, spirit realm, whatever you want to call it. Traditions of the um, hunt are found all over Europe, and it may, and in many names, um, in localized folklore such as um, Wutan's army, which is in Germany, the family of Harlequin, which is France, the Asgovi, Norway, and the Odensjak, Sweden, the wild uh, host, which is England, and the raid of the side, or she, which is Ireland. So it can be led by either male or female leader, and if the latter, it is usually a pagan goddess. It's just Hulda, Perchta, Bertha, Freya, or Diana. So that's really interesting how all these goddesses just kind of appear. So, now in the 10th century, the canon uh, episcopi uh, commanded wicked women who, deluded by the devil, rode at night with Diana, the goddess of the pagans. These so-called night riders were sometimes called good women, which witches. So, now in Greek mythology, the goddess Hecate was described as having a pack of swift hounds of Hades, exactly, who were devourers of life and death spirits. They were said to have hover. They were said to hover in the air and swoop down on the living. Now, sometimes Hecate herself took the form of a black dog, and even when in human form, she was said to be held like a hound. I like that. I, I love that. So, now the goddess um, who leads the wild hunt steals the souls of unbaptized children, and they are forced to, forced to join her nocturnal um, retinue. So during the 12 days of Yule, she also punishes uh, punished children who did not leave gifts out for her. So we have like a combination of like Gryla from Sabrina, which we all know and love, um, which I don't because it's a new Gryla in part four and I don't like that. Um, and then we have, yeah, Krampus. So it's pretty interesting. Now, any woman who dared spin or weave during that liminal transition period at the turning of the year also faced her wrath. Now, in the Troyalis, the goddess of winter, uh, Perchta, the wild huntress, even chased and tore apart those humans who engaged in the Perchtenef, a mass procession that was held in her honor at midwinter. Now, in Sweden, Germany, and the Swiss Alps, the wild hunt was led by a male leader, and sometimes it was seen chasing a wild hare, 
haired and moss-covered woman. So this figure is usually identified as a woodwife, elf, or one of the um, holder fairy folk. Now it has been suggested that this chase was a far memory of the Norse gods, favorite sport of hunting down female giants. So the wild hunt is often led by the uh, Teutonic god um, Odin or Woden, or in a post-Christian times by the devil. Now he is described as a one-eyed black-clad rider, sometimes horned, wearing a a broad-brimmed hat and a cloak and may have a red beard and hair. He rides a black, white, or gray horse with eight legs and gallops wildly through the night sky, followed by a pack of um, hellhounds with fiery red eyes who breathes out flames. I love this. This is just the mythology. It's just so amazing if you just want to like just go into it. and It is just so cool. I love it. Now, the Wild Hunt may also be accompanied by a host of demons, elves and goblins, half-human and half-animal spirits, shades of the departed in shrouds, the souls of the unbaptized and apostates, and dead warriors, warriors still showing their battle wounds. Huh, the unbaptized. I wonder why that, where that came from, why. It had to have come from Christianity, obviously. Alright, so now, if a mortal has the misfortune to encounter the um, hunter riding on the accident, oh, on the ancient trackways, he or she should shut their eyes and throw themselves face down in the middle of the road until the ghostly um, the procession it passes. Now, if you don't, if the traveler accidentally sees the host, they will either die or be swept up and carried away to spend eternity. There we are again, getting kidnapped with the wild chase. So you uh, you become part of it. So. Very interesting, though. Now, so the common belief um, that the wild hunt harvests the souls of the dead is illustrated in a grisly folktale from Devonshire. Now, this is really interesting. I love this. So I did post this earlier. Well, I, I think earlier this week, maybe. Last week, I don't know. Maybe last month. But this is interesting. So, right now, one stormy evening, a farmer was traveling, or was returning, across Dartmoor after a uh, day at the fair. He was rather um, the worst for drink, having a good time with his friends. Suddenly, a rider, dressed from top to toe in black, came into view, and the man recognized him as the local, le local leader of the Wild Hunt. Now, in an act of um, bravado caused the alcohol he cries out hail the war a local name for the devil and genie loki what sport have you had or have you had give me some of your spoils the writer replied here is some fresh meat and threw a bundle at the farmer's feet he then rode off laughing when the farmer unwrapped the bundle of cloth inside the he found the cold body of his own small child. Hmm. A little trick they played on him there, the one that was too fond of the drink. So yeah, that's pretty sad, but it does have a really, really, really good message. Now, sometimes the wild hunter, the wild hunt, not a supernatural or divine figure, but a well-known or famous mortal, so this can be a noble who had led a wicked or evil life and has been doomed to ride the skies for eternity as punishment for his earthly crimes. Right, so yeah, there are, you know, hellacious punishments, you know, when we die, especially in, you know, pre-Christian terms and times. So usually he has uh, enjoyed hunting as a sport during his life. Now, alternatively, he is a warrior or hero of in some examples are Wild Edric in Shropshire and King Arthur and Sir Francis Drake in Wales and Southwest England. Um, Theodoric the Great in Germany, the Emperor oh wow, Charles Mage in France and King Christian uh, like the fourth or the second, second in Norway. So, an alternative version of the Wild Hunt is found in the legend of Herney the Hunter, um, whose giant, or whose ghost still haunts Windsor Great Park in Berkshire. So, centuries ago, in the days when it was still a royal hunting forest, um, its gamekeeper was a man called Richard Herney, or Horney. 
One day he was out hunting with the king when they won, <coughs> wounded a stag. Um, enraged with pain, the animal charged the monarch. Um, Henry bravely threw himself in its path and killed the deer, but he was mortally injured in the process. As he lay dying, um, a stranger suddenly appeared from the trees. Um, he told the king he was a wizard, and the only way Herney could be saved was to cut off the stag's antler and attach them antlers and attach them to the keeper's head. Now this the king did, and Herney was miraculously re miraculously revived. All right. Now after this event, depending on which version of the story you read. Herney either lost all his hunting skills or was caught poaching. Either way, the king, although he was grateful for the keeper saving his life, did not want to show him any special treatment, as his other servants were saying he favored the forester. So he therefore diminished or dismissed Herney from his service. The hunter was so depressed um, at this turn of events that he hanged himself from um, a lightning blaster oak blasted oak in the evocatively named Fairy's Dell. Now, ever since his death, Herney's ghost has haunted the forest as a wild huntsman. He wears a helmet made of um, a stag skull with branching antlers, and on his left wrist is an iron bracelet that glows with an unearthly light. An owl flies above him as he leads his pack of demon hounds in a wild chase through the woods. So, now, Shakespeare does mention this. Um, Shakespeare mentioned uh, Herney in his Merry Wives of Midwinter and says, uh, takes cattle and makes milk or milch kine. Milk, milk cows yield blood. So, all right, now, sightings of Herney uh, were reported only in the winter months and continued with times of national crisis or tragic events affecting the royal family. So we can kind of connect Herney there with like the Mothman, a tragic events and stuff that, you know, a horrible events that are about to take place. So we're going to stop there. So yeah, it's really interesting. I mean, wow. I mean, we have all kinds of like things that we could, you know, in, in, in our culture, you know, especially in our culture, the Mothman and, you know, just different, you know, things that appear before all of these, you know, natural disasters, catastrophes, whatever you want to call it. But it is really, really interesting. So, but, <laughs> all right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed uh, more of Sabbatic Witchcraft. It gets more, it's even more interesting as we get into Lilith and Cain and then, you know, um, Lilith and Samael and, you know, the, the children and the grandchildren and then Tubal Cain and, oh my god, it's just so amazing. It's ridiculous. So, but that's just me. I love it. It's incredible. So, alright guys, um, everybody's candle magic is going. Gustavo and my Lupe. You guys are, everything is going, don't worry, just rest assured, keep it in your minds that the person that you want is already yours. And again, mysticamber.com, right here, down here, I don't know where it is, for 10% off with my name, R-Y-A-N-E, all caps locks. And you can get something like this, a piece of stone, crystal, something to help you out, you know, in manifesting, kind of grounding yourself back down to earth, or, you know, if you want to, you can probably get, you know, I don't know if they have Numite, but you could get your Numite there, so with 10% off, it's, it just makes it a little bit cheaper, so. But alright guys, um, yeah, hit that like button and share, and I love you guys, and I will see you all tomorrow, so. All my love, all the way from Venus, of course, and all the way back down. And I love you guys with all my heart, and thank you guys for all your amazing comments and everything that you do. Your comments and everything, is just, it's incredible. So you guys really honestly don't know how much you guys make my day. So, alright guys. I love you very much and I'll see you guys tomorrow.